A Recipe for Seduction is a KFC in Lifetime mini movie that takes Colonel Sanders, the world's favorite fast food grandfather, and tries to force us to see him as an object of sexual desire. Sorry KFC, but Santa Claus seems just a little less magical when he looks like he owns a Bowflex and collects the phone numbers of divorced moms. This seamless blend of entertainment, advertisement, and questionable family relations proves that the plot of any Lifetime movie can easily be cut down to less than 15 minutes. This movie was not exactly what I expected, which which means I was able to collect plenty of succulent clips that show cartoonish character traits, an unseasonably deadly storyline, and opulent locations that seem light years away from the nearest $4 box of fried chicken. So let's dig in for an extra crispy installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite TV movies, YouTube videos, and other seasonal treats, and we break that up like a nutcracker so that we can look at each little shard and figure out what is going on on this Christmas day. And this video that we're looking at today was so requested. The day that this piece of content was announced on Twitter, I got it tagged in it so many times, so I just knew that I had to break it down. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That lets me know that you want to see even more clip breakdowns just like this. It's a great way to support the channel. But most importantly, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on the notification icons and you'll always be the first to know when I baked up a fresh Christmas pie for your children. Um, also, I have merch such as phone cases and a Patreon where you can get exclusive content and extra bonuses from me every month. So check that out if you're into it. A Recipe for Seduction starts as many of these Lifetime movies do, introducing us to a wealthy family having a lovely dinner of food. Tell me if you think this is how you would expect the food to look in what is basically a 15 minute KFC commercial. <laughs> Wow, it sounds like people are really enjoying all of this delicious KFC, despite it looking distinctly room temperature. Mmm, break out the gold-plated china tonight we're dining on waxy cold chicken grease. That's how I know this family dry cleans their MAGA hats. They got no taste, no taste in the bones. Unlike the honey barbecue dipping sauce at KFC. Only me, 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 products. I really appreciated the brief length of this movie. Although I gotta say, although it was released in December and kind of had the guise on Twitter of being a lifetime Christmas movie, other than some background decorations, this piece has basically nothing to do with the holidays. Now I can forgive that. I think I just had certain expectations because Lifetime is 24 hour Christmas movies right now. The holiday movies are usually a lot less like life or death. Nonetheless, right away we get introduced to Billy, our well-to-do boyfriend. Perfect meal for the perfect evening. Right, sweetheart? It couldn't be more perfect. Yeah, so perfect. I love how there are flies crawling on the macaroni. This boyfriend, Billy, really puts our main character, Jessica, on the spot by proposing to her right there in front of both of their family. Basically, Jessica says, I gotta think about this and walks away from his proposal, which is um awkward. And the next day, we find out that that's not such great news. And also, the mom is not the nicest person. So Garibaldi, do you know what this marriage would mean for us? You have the rest of your lives to become soulmates. Father left us nothing but a legacy of debt. Mother, do you think you might be less obsessed with the bills if you didn't have a tea party with them every morning? Don't they have a paperless option, Carol? Also, you already know the mom is trouble when she's greeting us with a 7 a.m. smoky eye, okay? That is untrustworthy. Nothing says evil stepmother vibes like competing eye and lip makeup and a morning scowl. They're not talking for long before our love interest comes in. The, the menu for the Christmas Eve luncheon is ready for you to look at, Mrs. Monsetta. Sorry, who are you? Harlan Sanders, the new cook. Jessica said, I know I don't know you, but you smell like cooking oil and that is all the info I need. Shall we go to my bedroom and lay down a tarp? You can tell off the bat she's sweating this guy and she's also ignoring Billy's phone calls. In between these next two scenes is where they would really add a lot of fluff in a typical Lifetime movie. It would be like getting to know him in the kitchen, understanding what makes him tick, having some sensitive surprises come up about him. But we don't have time for all of that. So we cut right to something a little later down where we learn some meaningful secrets about one another. Nobody's offered you a tour of the property yet, have they? Shall we? To our rear, you'll see the ghost who haunts our main doorway. Today she's wearing a belted shirt dress that says, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. The mom is always creeping around the corner spying like something out of hell. I can't with her. Also, I guess Colonel Sanders is not Colonel yet because he's going by Harlan. I don't know when he enters the war and what sort of atrocities he commits there, but 
we gotta know. As they're walking along the pond, Jessica confides that she's really not feeling Billy and doesn't want to marry him. And Harlan expresses that he has a secret recipe that he's planning to release that's gonna change the world. How mysterious. That's when Billy confronts the two lovers. Beat it, Crouton. Get back to the kitchen and let me and my fiance Billy, talk. Stop. Don't turn this into the biggest mistake of your life. <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Turns out this power play is even hotter when the guy has mashed potatoes under his fingernails. I wish that this little thing didn't normalize possessive behavior from that man so much. Like, she doesn't act all alarmed when he grabs her arm. If someone grabbed my arm even, like, a little bit like that, I would be playing the victim for the next six years. I would be at the DMV like, I was kidnapped once, ma'am! Where's my episode of I Survived? That guy brushed past me in a way that I didn't like. Also, it would be helpful for me if I knew how long Jessica was with Billy leading up to this dinner last night, because it would be a lot a lot easier to swallow that she didn't want to marry him if I knew they weren't really boyfriend and girlfriend before this. I completely recognize they didn't have time to really build that up, but I don't know. They could have made it even more cartoonish, like what if she was introduced to Billy that night where they're like, he's a Garibaldi. And then after two bites, he's like, I want to propose. Then it would be like, I'm not even taking this seriously. And the mom is the only one taking it seriously because she wants the money. We get back on the phone with Lee, who was that man that Jessica exchanged glances with earlier. They really were rolling their eyes for the back row, weren't they? Real subtle, guys. What's up? I'm about to go on a date with that guy I met at the farmer's market. We're meeting at his country club. Interesting move, trying to distract me from the black best friend trope by layering on a gay best friend trope. Well, guess what, KFC? A token character is not a chicken strip. You can't just roll it in buffalo sauce and call it something different. I do, however, like Lee. He's the best character in I, I want a whole full-length movie of just Lee and Jessica being friends. That would be cool. Because just this conversation they have together, I'm like, oh, let's watch TV together. But these people are so rich, they don't want nothing to do with me. If I asked to come hang out at their fancy vineyard, they would say, what is this gay trash blowing in with the dust? They would say, are you the vagrant who sells cigarettes? Are you a goddamn shoe shiner from the past come here to haunt me? Get out of here. I'm not worthy of their rich lives. I think that also adds to like this escapist screwball comedy of it all. But already, do you guys see how there's nothing to do with Christmas here? Like they could have done this partnership any time of the year really and it would have made sense. They just would have had to remove some of those Christmas decorations. I was really expecting like a Christmas romance kind of movie but this is more like a mystery star-crossed lovers romance. Either way, the mom is on one. <laughs> I'm sorry, can you make your expression just a little more puckered? She said, in our family, we come from a long line of sphincter faces. If she purses her lips any harder, she's gonna fracture a sinus. She steals her daughter's phone and texts Billy to meet him. He's hanging out at a fancy country club. I may have noticed a visible spotlight in this shot, but I noticed the hot bartender first, so I'm gonna let you do what you gotta do to get that cinematic lens flare in there. In order to get that look where it starts off with that light shining in, they basically get a directional light coming right in from an angle of the window and shooting it towards the bar. You can see all the dust floating in that direct beam of light. That way, when the camera starts out at its first position, it's getting a little bit of that light shining directly into the lens and giving you a lens flare, but by the time they move, the actor's head disguises it. I love stuff like like that because putting a light like that is pretty cheap. It doesn't require crazy special equipment, but it adds a really nice sense of mood to their shot and it gives it a professional look. Play around with light, gang. It's fun. The mother comes up to Billy and starts talking special to him and putting her hands on him like they're in love. Luckily, Lee's there to catch it. We all have our secrets, Billy. You remember our long weekend in the vineyard? If you marry my daughter, I promise there'll be more long weekends in your future. Wait, are you giving me Fridays off or am I giving you your daughter's herpes? The mother is basically like, you gotta get rid of Harlan Sanders cause she's falling for him, the cook. And he's got this secret recipe that's gonna change the world. Cause remember the mom has been spying on these people running around like she's a ghost of blind manor since day one. She knows everything. She's listening on all over the place. There's not a square inch of this picturesque vineyard that she doesn't know what's going on in it. The pool boy's pill problem, she already knows. She just doesn't care. <laughs> Secrets out, chicken man. You know, I always had a feeling that the KFC secret recipe included salt, but the only evidence I had to go on was the heart disease that killed my grandparents. I love how perfectly indecipherable they made the secret recipe. He said seven herbs, two spices. There are certain words that are just completely illegible. It's a fun little sight gag. Harlan comes into the kitchen and Billy is like, I'm gonna give you $500,000 to disappear. And he also gives us this really quick third act conflict for a 15 minute movie. It comes at about the nine minute mark. Billy says, you're just jealous because Jessica said yes to me. And he lies to Harlan and says, she wants to marry me and you should just take the money and run. Take the check. 
get lost. Of course, this misunderstanding leaves Harlan rather disappointed, but I have a feeling we're gonna make it up. I saw you and Billy at the club. You had your hands all over him. Billy was rightfully upset about the botched proposal. I was merely consoling him. I don't believe you. Your hair looks like you were just riding in a sidecar. This woman has been the epitome of excellence with her perfect hair and makeup this whole time. How come now it looks like she just took her coat off? Either way, she gets devious trying to stop Lee from going on and telling Jessica what he knows. Jessica! <laughs> She said, not in my country club. In the 80s, we agreed to black or gay, not both. From the minute this happened, I'm like, oh no, he better survive. You did not just bash a gay character in the head. Not in my Lifetime movie. I've seen that other Lifetime movie with Kristen Wiig. They killed a gay character, her gay best friend, and they just ignore it. So I was really hoping they didn't do that here. Harlan approaches Jessica and he gives her back the check and is like, tell your fiance I can't be bought. I hope you and your fiance are happy. Harlan, wait. This woman is full on insidious demon in every other shot. What is her problem? They were like, um, are there any haunted mirrors we could have her appear from behind? They just knew what they had with this actress because she has a prize winning scowl. They wanted to feature that in every frame. This is her. Like, we get it, mama. You don't want her to marry Slater. It's gonna happen though. And then he's gonna dredge her breasts with his greasy chicken fingers and you're gonna have to sit there and watch it. You're gonna smell it wafting through your vents and you're gonna know what's up. You're gonna know what's up in the next room, mom. You're gonna have to deal with it. They're just doing what chicken lovers do. See, in a normal full length movie, Harlan would have actually left after this misunderstanding, but because this is a shortened version, she grabs his hand and is like, listen, I never said that. And basically explains the lie like right away. That really helps speed things up a lot and quell some of the dramatic irony that really builds in a bunch of extra commercial breaks for these ones. We don't need those commercial breaks because this is the commercial break. Don't forget, brought to you by KFC. You know where to order from Grubhub tonight. This video was not sponsored by the way. This was just heavily recommended. You say jump, I'll say what bridge should I climb up on and jump off of for you. Jessica goes to tell her mother that she's not marrying Billy and she's like, well, Harlan's gone. He left, he packed up and left. And she's like, I can't believe he would do that. So she's out for a walk and she hears a suspicious noise. So she goes into a utility closet and that's where she discovers Billy had tied up Harlan and the mom comes in and they're just about to kill him. But she's the mom is also freaking out because Lee has escaped. Just as Billy is about to attack and kill Harlan, we get this trustworthy old device of the best friend coming back and saving the day. Now we both have serious head injuries. Equality! Every time I see someone get knocked out in a movie, I'm like, ugh. Like if you got hit in the head hard enough to be unconscious for a few hours, that's probably like a concussion. You need to go to the hospital. That could seriously shorten your lifespan. But in movies, they're like, oh, all you have to do is hit him with the back of your gun and he'll magically go to sleep for an hour and then wake up when he's all nicely tied up. Don't do that ever in real life. Also, maybe let's try to write a new type of cliche into things like chloroform. That probably is more realistic, right? Drugs and chemicals not bashings and head trauma. That's my 2020 motto. When her plan is foiled, the mom goes nuts. This is all your fault! <laughs> See, you rich white ladies always wanna be stick skinny, but then you get into one shoving match and you go flying like a Halloween skeleton. You're not ready for murder, sis. You do soul cycle. A year later, Harlan and Jessica are wedded by Lee, who's officiating it, and all is well and happy, except for this little, uh, what do we call it? Cliffhanger. You have a visitor today, Mrs. Mancera. Hello, buddy. Well? I found them. Why do I feel like if Lee attempted murder on someone, he would get a stricter punishment than a sweatsuit, no hair dye, and some relaxing time in a meditation garden? I just get the feeling. What do you guys think of KFC Lifetime's A Recipe for Seduction? Does this make you know where you're gonna order your next Uber Eats from? Let me know in the comments below. But also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns. It really supports this channel. And if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for recommending Ms. Movie to me. Don't forget to check out the merch and my Patreon for extra exclusives. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for frying some chicken up with me. I will see you next time.